Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, God Bless. This is my very first live broadcasting. Please let me know if you can hear me. This is a test. This is a test. Hello, hello. I will begin if you can guys tell me if you can hear me let me know please in the YouTube chat because this is my very first time hello guys can you hear me hello hello okay great it's time for the very first live broadcasting of Rob Kishan. Welcome everyone. God bless you. Please keep me in your prayers because this is my very first time going live. Thank you for joining in guys. Is the sound clear? Is it crystal clear or should I work on my settings? Okay, great, great, great. Thank you very much. Guys, today we want to have the opportunity together to do a nice introduction about me, uh, where I will introduce myself, for example, who I am and what I have done in the past. I will do a nice teaching also during this live broadcasting we will go through some islamic sources and see what kind of false and contradictory the cult of islam is and last but not least we will have a nice q a session in the end with our guests in the live chat in other words you can go ahead ask me some questions about islam or the mentioned teaching or topics that we discussed during this live show and i will also try to answer as far as i can before we start i want to do a nice prayer together with you guys i love to pray before we start especially this is my first time so let us pray together guys dear lord thank you for your grace Thank you for your greatness and thank you for our daily bread. Thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Please give me the strength and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deception. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord, the devil is using deception and we know he desires to keep us from truth lord lord please don't allow him to win give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement deception and doubt please lord please lord help us honor you in all our ways in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, what shall we talk about today, guys? Before we start, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and smash that like button. Today, I want to go through some um, Quranic ayahs with you and see how the Quran teaches us about what the Bible actually says and if the Quran agrees with the Bible. If we go to Quran, chapter Ali Amran, chapter 3, ayah 3, it says, نزل عليك عليك الكتاب بالحق 
مصدقا لما بين يديه The translation from Sahih International says He has sent down upon you O Muhammad the book in truth confirming what was before it and he revealed the Torah and the gospel So here as you see Muhammad had access to the Torah and the gospel but Muslims say that the Torah and the gospel is corrupted or either lost some of them even go as far as saying that the Torah and the gospel of Allah are lost but here as you see Allah is claiming that he is the one who sent down the Torah and the Injil and what Muhammad is receiving is confirming that what is revealed to the Christians and the Jews. So it makes no sense when Muslims say that the Torah and the Injil, which is the Gospel, are corrupted. Muslims do not make any sense, but they have to say that the Bible of Allah is corrupted because our holy scripture completely contradicts Muhammad it contradicts his teaching and it contradicts his cult called Islam so as you see Muslims need to fix the disasters that Muhammad created for them 1400 years later and if we go to another ayah we can see in chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 41, where it says, And believe in what I have sent down, confirming that which is already with you, and be not the first to disbelieve in it, and do not exchange my signs for a small price, and fear me. Here it says, Musaddiqan lima ma'kum. So again, as you see here, it says that what the Quran of Muhammad is saying that it confirms that is already with the people of the book. Again, the Quran confirming the scripture of the Jews and the Christians. So it does not make sense when Muslims say that the Bible of Allah is corrupted. So instead of going to the Bible, guys, just show them ayahs like this from the Quran because as you see clearly Muslims again have to fix the problems and disasters that Muhammad gave to the Muslims Musaddiqan bayna yadayhi so as you see we can conclude that Muhammad actually had access to the holy scripture of the Jews and the Christians so how is it possible when did the scripture got corrupted? When and how? We don't know because the Quran doesn't say that. So Muslims have to come with an assumption because our scripture, as I said earlier, contradicts the Quran. And here it says, Musaddiqan lima ma'akum, that is with, already with you. The scripture that you have so clearly the Jews and the Christians in the time of Muhammad they had access and they possessed the uncorrupted scriptures of Allah which is the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur Lord of mercy as you see Muslims have to do a lot of tap dancing to add up to the Quran because clearly if they say that our scripture is corrupted then they are adding their own assumption to the Quran and we know that you are not allowed to do bid'ah which is innovating adding to the Quran and Islam if we go to a different ayah in chapter 10 ayah 94 we can see the following and Please read with me. This is chapter Yunus, ayah 90, sorry, uh, ayah 94, yes. فَإِن 
كنت في شك مما أنزلنا إليك فاسألي الذين يقرؤون الكتاب من قبلك so the translation of this ayah as you heard I just read the Arabic for you it says so if you are in doubt O Muhammad about that which we have revealed to you then ask those who have been reading the scripture before you wait a second wait a second here the Quran is saying that Muhammad if he is in doubt then go ask the Jews and the Christians why you're a prophet of Allah why should you go to normal humans right who are not prophets why should you go as a prophet to them to make sure to remove your doubt I mean that doesn't make sense and why would Muhammad be in doubt how is that because if we go to the chronological order of the Quran for this chapter we can see that it's in the 51st, 51st order basically here as you see this is chapter 10 and it's basically almost in the half of the Quran you can say because you know the Quran has 114 chapters right 114 chapters and chapter 10 is almost in the middle so how is it possible that Muhammad is still in doubt after so many uh, uh, ayahs and, and chapters Muhammad is still in doubt Muhammad is still in doubt that doesn't make sense this ayah doesn't make sense so Muslims why is your prophet still in doubt and why should he ask the Jews and the Christians? Right? And why is Allah telling him not to doubt? As you hear, it's, uh, as you can read here, if we continue, it says, The truth has certainly come to you from your Lord. So never be among the daughters. Why is Allah asking him that after 50 chapters? Right? After 50 chapters, Allah needs to tell to Muhammad, don't doubt. This is stupid. This doesn't make sense at all. This should have come down in the very beginning of the Quran. Let's say chapter 1 or 2. But not in the 51st chapter of the Quran. Right? So here, as you conclude, that basically the Muslims have played with the Quran. Because we need to think and the logic is that this ayah should not be basically in the middle of the Quran but in the first pages of the Quran because else why why would Muhammad still be in doubt right Muslims think about this here you can clearly see that the Quran doesn't make sense at all Muslims, please, please, please think about these horrible mistakes in the Quran that do not make sense at all. This cannot be a book from God, from the holy God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Muhammad is a false prophet, and Allah is a dead idol, a pagan moon idol. Because Muhammad took uh, basically Allah with him to Islam <laughs> because the pagans of the Quraysh, the Quraysh pagans worshipped Allah together with the many other idols in Mecca, right? We know that the Allah in pre-Islam had three daughters, Allah al-Uzza wal Manat, right? And these are the high, mighty cranes that used to carry the prayers of the pagans in Quraysh, Mecca Quraysh, to Allah, right? Because these were bird idols that carried the prayers to the supreme moon idol called Allah. So Allah is not a new God in Islam. He already existed in pre-Islamic Mecca. 
Let us go to a different ayah. If we go to chapter 5, ayah 47, we can see the following. وَلْيَحْكَمُ أَهْلُ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ And let the people of the gospel judge by, by what Allah has revealed therein. And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then it is those who are def definitely disobedient. So here, Allah is saying to the people of the gospel, which are is us, the Christians, to judge by what Allah has revealed inside the Injil, inside the gospel. Wait, 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 wait. Allah, are you telling us that we Christians should judge by the gospel? Meaning, if we Christians have to judge by the gospel, that means we have to reject the fake prophet of Islam, Muhammad, because the Injil completely contradicts Muhammad and his teaching in Islam. And <laughs> the, the Quran even says, if we do not judge but by the gospel, then we are disobedient. So we are forced to judge by the gospel as Christians, according to Allah and the book of Allah, which is the Quran, as you see in front of you. So we have to reject Muhammad according to the Quran itself. Here, Muhammad made a really big mistake. He created in this ayah a huge disaster for the Muslims. As you see, guys, we Christians need to judge by the, the Bible, which is in this case, the Injil. And if we don't judge by it, we are disobedient. We are not listening to what Allah says. We are basically unbelievers. So here, as you see, Muhammad created a huge dilemma for the Muslims. A huge dilemma. But we know why Muhammad did this, guys. Because don't forget, when Muhammad was in uh, basically Medina, he was trying to reconcile with the Jews and the Christians, like he did for the pagans in Mecca. But we know the pagans in Mecca rejected him. So he went to Medina and also he tried there to reconcile with the Jews and the Christians. And they also rejected him, right? This is why you see that Muhammad much later in the Quran, for example, chapter nine, he says that if the Jews and the Christians don't pay Jizya, you have to fight them, right? Fight them. Chapter nine, ayat 29. Force the, on them the jizya, and they need to feel subdued and humiliated if they don't want to become Muslims, if, re, if they reject Muhammad. So as you see, again, Muhammad doing what he does best, being nothing but a contradictory prophet, contradicting himself over and over. This is a huge hypocrisy in this ayah again. Please take notes and use this against Muslims in your debates. If we go to the hadith, guys, if you go to the hadith, to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, we can also see that here in this hadith, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 68, 19 Sahih al-Bukhari hadith number 68-19 Here we can read the following story A Jew and a Jewess were brought to Allah's messenger on a charge of committing an illegal sexual intercourse So two Jewish people a man and a lady were doing bing bong bang <laughs> basically, and they were charged of committing this illegal act. The Prophet asked them, what is the legal punishment for this sin, for the illegal sexual intercourse in your book, the Torah? They replied, our priests have innovated the punishment of blackening the faces with charcoal and te tajbiya. Abdullah bin Salim said, O Allah's messenger, tell them to bring the Torah. Wow, 
So they don't ask for the Quran, they ask for the Torah. The Torah was brought. So as you see guys, Muhammad again here had access to the Torah. So Muslims, how can you say that the Torah is corrupted? That doesn't make sense. Your prophet had access to the Torah and he's going to judge by what the Torah says. So the Torah, <laughs> Lord of mercy, the Torah was brought and the one of the Jews put his hand over the divine verse. You see, the whole Torah is called divine. So they look up the divine verse of the regime, which is stoning to death and started reading what preceded and what followed it. On that Ibn Salim, Salam said to the Jew, lift up your hand, behold, the divine verse of the regime was under his hand. So Allah's apostles ordered that the two sinners be stoned to death. So here Muhammad is judging from the Torah, which Muslims today, 1400 years later, calling corrupted, which doesn't make sense because Muhammad, as you see, has had access to the Torah and he's judging by the Torah. And so they were stoned. So those two Jewish people, the man and the lady, were stoned to death. Ibn Umar added, so both of them were stoned at the Balad and I saw the Jew sheltering the Jewish. So Muslims, this is a Sahih Hadith. You can't say this is Daif, this is weak, this is a fabrication. Why would Muslims call the Torah again and the Injil corrupted or lost, say that it's lost and corrupted while their prophet is judging by the divine Torah. See that? It's divine. It's from God. You Muslims again need to fix the problems and disasters that Muhammad created for you because the Torah contradicts the Quran. The Injil contradicts the Quran. So 1400 years later, Muslims need to fix what Muhammad did not tell. Because as you see here, the apostle of Allah, Allah's messenger is going by what the Torah says. So when did the Torah got corrupted Muslims? And by who and when? Are you telling me that uh, all the Muslims, all the Jews collected all the Torahs and corrupted them after the death of Muhammad? Really? Is that what you're telling us? Man, that would be an amazing job to do. Collecting all the Torahs and corrupt, corrupted them after the death of Muhammad? Muslims, please wake up. Please wake up. Stop adding to what Muhammad did not say. Stop assuming that the Torah and the Injil are corrupted because that doesn't make sense. You are adding to Islam. But we know again, like I said, Muslims have to do it because now they know that our holy scripture of the Jews and the Christians contradicts Islam and the fake prophet of Islam. This is why they have to say without any proof, as you see in front of you, without any honesty and without any shame, they have to say that the Holy Bible must be corrupted because it contradicts the Quran and the teaching of Muhammad. Here's another hadith guys. This is from Sunan Abi Dawood. This is a great Hassan by Al Albani. Sunan Abi Dawood, hadith number 4449. Read with me. A group of Jews came and invited the messenger of Allah to Kuf. So he visited them in their school. They said, Abu Qasim, this was the nickname of Muhammad, Abu Qasim. One of our men has committed fornication with a woman. So the Jews are saying, oh Muhammad, one of our men, he had sex, illegal sex with a, another woman. So pronounce judgment upon them. 
they placed a cushion for the messenger of Allah who sat on it and said bring the Torah so as you see Muhammad is taking the cushion from underneath him the judge cushion basically and he places the Torah on it it was then brought the Torah was brought to Muhammad he then withdrew the cushion from beneath him and placed the Torah on it saying I believe in thee so he's he believes in the Torah he swears on the Torah and in him who revealed thee so Muslims how can you say that the Torah is corrupted while your prophet is swearing on it and he says I believe in thee and in him who revealed thee which is Allah Muslims again as we showed you again from a very good hadith like the last hadith from Bukhari that Muhammad is judging from the Torah because two Jews committed fornication and not only that he swears and believes in the Torah he swears on the Torah and he believes in the one who sent it so why Muslims 1400 years later have to say that the Torah is corrupted and if we continue he then said bring me one who is learned among you then a young man was brought the transmitter then mentioned the rest of the tradition of stoning as we saw from the last hadith that the two Jews were stoned so Muslims you need to think again either you're going to stop adding to the teaching of Islam and Muhammad and stop adding to the Quran calling the holy scriptures of the Jews and Christians corrupted or lost or just leave Islam and I invite you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and reject Muhammad because as you see Muhammad actually confirms the previous scripture but then we have the problem that the, our holy scripture which is uncorrupted as you see because Muhammad didn't say here that the Torah is corrupted it contradicts completely the teaching of Muhammad and the Quran of Allah Muslims you cannot have a cake and eat it too let us go to another topic let me read for you from chapter al hijr chapter 15 ayah 87 if you read here together with me it says in chapter 15 ayah 87 and we have certainly given you O Muhammad seven of the often repeated verses and the great Quran now why did I brought up this ayah guys because I wanted to show you that not is the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians uncorrupted we our scriptures still according to Muhammad and the Quran uncorrupted as we mentioned earlier and showed you here we're going to show you that the Quran of Allah is corrupted by the Muslim hands why because it says here that the seven often repeated verses and the Quran are given to Muhammad guys if you read it like this maybe you will not understand where I'm coming from now the seven often repeated verses which are which is or which are those seven often repeated verses by the Muslims it is Al-Fatiha chapter 1 guys so if we read it as this like this and we have certainly given you O Muhammad Al-Fatiha chapter 1 Al-Fatiha and wa Al-Quran Al-Azim and the great Quran so here as you see we can understand that Muslims added Al-Fatiha because the, the Fatiha has seven ayahs to the Quran of Allah you see we prove to you that the uh, scripture of the Jews and the Christians is 
not corrupted as the Muslims claims and we prove to you that Muhammad is judging by the Torah and the Quran is saying that the Christians must judge by the Injil and what is revealed in it. So we have to reject Muhammad and the Jews have to reject Muhammad. But as you see in front of you, the Muslims played with the Quran and added Al-Fatiha to the Quran. If we go to Tafsir guys, you will see that the seven often repeated verses is Al-Fatiha. Let me prove it to you. From Tafsir Al-Jalalain, read with me. And really we have given you seven of the often repeated verses. The Prophet said that this meant Surah Al-Fatiha. As if you see in front of you, this is Tafsir for the same chapter, same ayah. Chapter 15, Ayah 87, as you see. As reported by the two sheikhs, Bukhari and his student Muslims, since it is repeated in every unit of the prayer rak'ah and the great Quran. So you see, Muslims added Al-Fatiha to the Quran, corrupting the Quran. You see? They corrupted the Quran because Al-Fatiha is a prayer. Right? Muslims always go to Al-Fatiha when they pray. Right? Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. Rabbil Alameen al-Rahman al-Rahim, you know? So, you know, Muslims, before you call our scripture corrupted and lost, at least look inside the mirror and see for yourself that you Muslims corrupted the Quran of Allah with your own hands. At least look at your own disasters. Right? Guys, please take notes and use this against Muslims in the court of law in your debates. You see how easy it is to show you that the Quran of Allah is corrupted? Right? Oh, Lord of mercy. Let me go to another topic, guys, because I want to keep the corruption of the Quran, this topic, for a later moment, for a later session, right? I just wanted to show you, in a nutshell, how easy it is to show Muslims that the Quran is corrupted by Muslim hands, yeah, right? So, let me go to another topic, and we will pick up this topic Lord willing in a future session. If we go to the Bible guys, if we go to the Bible, we can read and every Christian should know about these verses in the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, we can see the following. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the word was God. This is John 1.1. 1, 1. So here you can understand that the word, the eternal word of God was already with God and the word was God. And if we go, if we go to the last verse in this chapter, as you see here in uh, front of you, verse 14, chap ch chapter John 1, verse 14, you can read, and the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. So that word already exists as you see in verse 1. It already existed with God and that word was God. And then the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory. As you see, it says his. This is talking about Jesus, of course. That word, that eternal word, the kalima, as Muslims call it, the kalima became flesh. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and the truth. So Muslims, when they love to attack the Trinity, they have no clue who the Son is, as you see here in front of you. The Son already existed as the eternal word of God, with God and is God. And that word became flesh and dwelled among us. Glory to this eternal word that became flesh. And 
we know him as Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Muslims, we showed you that the Quran is corrupted. Muhammad contradicted himself. Muhammad contradicted the Bible while at the same time he's a hypocrite telling us in the Quran to judge by the gospel. And if we don't judge by the gospel, we are not Christians, we are unbelievers. And he also in the hadith, as we showed you, he asked for the Torah to judge by the Torah. But then again, the Torah and the Injil, both of the Injil and the Torah contradict Muhammad and his teaching and his fake religion, his man-made religion called Islam. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet, Muslims. Drop this fake satanic cult called Islam and join us in Christ, who is the word of God that existed with God, with the Father, and came into the flesh and dwelled among us on earth 2,000 years ago. Leave Islam and I want to ask you to join us in Christ because only through Christ you are saved. He is the Injil. He is the good news, Muslims. You know, the Quran loves to talk about the Injil all the time, but it does not tell you who the Injil is. It's Jesus. He is the good news to the world, to everyone. Right? Lord of mercy. So Muslims have a problem with God coming into the flesh, but they don't have a problem well when their Quran is saying that Allah can enter creation. So why is it for Muslims not a problem that Allah can enter his creation, but in Christianity for them it's a problem that God is the eternal word and that same eternal word came into the flesh walking among us. If we go to the Quran, you know Muslims love, always love to tell you that Allah does not enter his creation, but we are going to prove them wrong from the Quran. Let me show you guys. This is chapter Al-Araf, chapter 7, ayah 143. It says, when Moses came to the place appointed by us, and his Lord addressed him, he said, O oh my Lord, show thyself to me. So here Moses is asking Allah to show himself to him. To who? To Moses. That I may look upon thee. So he is asking, I want to see you, Allah. Moses is asking that. Allah then says, now pay attention guys, by no means canst to see me. So Allah is saying, you can't see me directly, right? But look upon the mount, if it abide in its place, then shalt thou see me. So again, it doesn't make sense, because then Moses will see uh, Allah, right? So he, <laughs> you will not see me, but you will see me. You, you will not see me, but he will see me. When his Lord manifested his glory. You see that guy? So here, Allah manifests himself on the mountain, Tajalla, Tajalla ala Jabal. Falamma Tajalla Rabbuhu lil Jabali. When Allah manifested Himself on the mountain, so Allah became physical, guys, and Moses can see him. So why Muslims, why, why are you lying about your Allah? As you see in front of you, Allah actually did enter creation and he manifested himself on the mountain. Muslims, Muslims, why are you lying? I mean, for God's sakes, why do you need to lie to us that Allah cannot enter his creation? As you see in front of you, this is the Quran. This is chapter 7 of the Quran in ayah 143. In front of you, you can see that Allah did manifest. He became physical on the mountain. 
Muslims drop this act. It's 2019. We are immune for your taqiyya. We are immune for your deception. We can actually read. Everything is online. We can go to the Quran. We can go to the Hadith. We can go to the Tafsir. So you cannot play with our minds like Ahmadi Dad did 35 years ago. You know, many people back then did not know, did not read the Quran, did have no access maybe to the Quran, did not know Arabic, right? But as you see, guys, Muslims are in need. They are desperate to lie about their God. So <laughs> Allah is contradicting the Muslims and he as you see in front of you he actually did enter his creation because a mountain right which is on this earth is his creation he entered his creation and manifested himself on the mountain and Moses could see him according to this ayah right let us go to another Ayah, guys, in the Quran, chapter 27, chapter 27, ayahs 8, 7, 8, and 9. 27, ayah 7. Remember when Moses said unto his whole household, Lo, I spare, spy a, a fire of a fire, I will bring you tidings, tents, or bring to you a borrowed flame that ye may warm yourselves. Then let me continue, ayah 8. But when he reached it, he was called saying, Blessed is who is ever, who's, who's ever is in the fire, and who is ever round about it. Who is this? This is Allah inside the fire. Again, Allah entering his creation. The fire is a creation, right? So again, Allah entering his creations, but Muslims say, they love to tell you that Allah cannot enter his creation. Again, a false lie, deception. Uh-oh, what are we going to do with this, Muslims? What are you going to do with these ayahs? You want to burn them like Uthman did? We know Uthman, guys, burned a lot of Qurans back then, right? In the 7th century. Because the many Mus'hafs that Muslims had caused a lot of confusion. They did not basically agree with one another. So Uthman collected many Quranic manuscripts, he put them on top of each other and he burned them. And as we know, Muslims tell us that the Quran was sent down in seven ways, seven ways to recite it. And Muha sorry, and Uthman, he burned six of them and kept one. Later on, Muslims killed Uthman and they buried him between the Jews on a Jewish cemetery. I wonder why they burned him, guys. Sorry, they killed him. And he was praying when he was killed. Right? Why did they kill him? <laughs> Imagine, guys, if we do the same. If we, on the streets of London or New York, burn so many Qurans like Uthman did. What will happen, guys, if we do that? I think a lot of Christians in Pakistan... Afghanistan might be killed because Muslims will riot, right, if we do that. But Uthman had a nice Quranic barbecue, right? Why would you burn Quranic manuscript? That doesn't make sense. Guys, imagine, do you see any Christian burning any manuscripts? Of course not. We will never do that. And there is no Christian who will say that the Bible 
is eternal because only the eternal word who is Jesus is eternal, right? We will never say like the Muslims, the Quran is an uncorrupted eternal word of Allah, the speech of Allah. Because now you're making, leveling up the Quran on the same level of Allah. So here we have two, two defi uh, defined beings, right? We have Allah and we have the Quran. Both are uncreated, eternal. So basically you're following a pagan religion because you have more than one God. How can the Quran of Allah be uncreated, eternal, and coexist with Allah at the same time? That doesn't make sense, Muslims. This is why the Christians and the Jews follow only one God. And the Christians, they say, we say, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God. And as we showed you from John 1.1, 1, 1, that eternal word is God. And that same God entered a flesh body and dwelled among us to come and save us. Because we cannot save ourselves. We need God to save us because we cannot save ourselves. All right? Let me continue, guys, and show you more authentic sources outside the Quran that Allah actually does enter his creation. And Muslims love to contradict and call their own most trusted sources lies and deception. Right? They are rejecting their own Quran, saying that Allah does not enter creation. But as you see, Allah actually did enter his creation. He manifested himself on the mountain and he is inside the fire. Let me show you from a website called islamqna.info. Someone is asking a question on this website and we have a Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Munajjid who is issuing a fatwa, fatwa number 20,652 and someone here is asking when the Prophet says Allah created Adam in his image what does his image refer to and how should we understand it? So this Shaykh is now going to answer he says praise to Allah praise to Allah <laughs> Alhamdulillah Al-Bukhari hadith number 6227 and Sahih Muslim 28 41 narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace and blessing be of Allah be upon him said Allah created Adam in his image so wait a, wait a second Muslims you Muslims always say that Allah does not look like us nothing is like Allah we cannot compare ourselves to Allah but here Muhammad is saying that Adam looks like Allah right Adam is created in the picture of Allah you know I don't want to go too much into details because you know Adam was really a big tall guy 60 cubits tall man this guy was big he was he was a huge monster <laughs> but <laughs> guys uh, you know uh, yeah this is Islam guys so why do you have a problem with Christians who say that God came in the flesh but you don't have a problem contradicting the prophet, your own prophet, saying that Allah does not look like any one of us. He's above his creation which is false also because we showed you from the Quran that he can enter the fire when he spoke to Moses and he manifested himself on the mountain. Sorry, that one, the first one was with Abraham and the other one was with Moses. But yeah, um, how is this possible, guys? How is this possible? Why are you being a hypocrite? Why are you being a hypocrite, guys? So uh, here, as you see, Allah does look like humans. So not only does he enter his creation, he also looks like us. Another hadith, guys. 
from the same website. So someone again asks a question and the same Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad Salih al munajjid Someone is asking about a question about the hadith and the, the Shaykh says this hadith is sahih. This hadith is sahih. The hadith is a sahih hadith which is proven in the soundest two books. So the most authentic books after the book of Allah which is the Quran. It was narrated by Al-Bukhari in Sahih in Sahih Al-Bukhari hadith number 1145 and by Sahih Muslim 1261 from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace and blessing yeah, Allah is praying on him said the Lord descends every night to the lowest heaven when one third of the night remains and says who will call upon me that I may answer him so here you know we know that the heaven is the so-called creation of Allah in Islam so here every night again proving to you that Muhammad from the mouth of the Prophet saying that Allah enters his creation and he goes to the lowest heaven you know the, the heaven of Allah has seven layers, seven heavens. And he enters in, in the lowest one, the number one. So that one is, is much closer to, to, to earth, basically. Right? As you see again, Allah entering his creation. But Muslims again love to tell you and lie, say, saying that Allah does not enter his creation. Why are you doing that? Why are you lying again, Muslims? This is Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. We showed you from the Quran, Allah enters his creation. We showed you from the Hadith that Allah does enter his creation. You know, we can conclude actually that Muslims, you know, Islam is only an ummah, a nation of illiteracy. Ignorance is bliss in Islam. They are Muslims. They love to talk about Islam, do da'wah on the streets, so you can say the shahada and accept Islam. But as you see, most Muslims have no clue what they're talking about. They have to lie. And the Shaykh is rebuking them, saying that actually Allah does enter his creation, which is heaven, the lowest heaven in this case. Oh, the irony, the irony guys, they have a problem with Jesus, right, as the eternal word of God, enter creation, right, becoming flesh to save us, but they don't have a problem with Allah entering his creation, right, which is physical, as we showed you from the Quran also, a physical appearance. Let me show you from another hadith, guys, that... Allah is a shapeshifter. Allah is a shapeshifter. And we know that demons are also shapeshifters, remember? You know, they can change appearance. So Allah is a shapeshifter and will come to them in a shape other than they know and will say, I am your Lord. They will say, we seek refuge with Allah from you. So they are calling Allah himself Satan, right? Shaitan al rajim So they are... Basically, they want to stone Allah. <laughs> they are seeking refuge with Allah from Allah because they don't know that this is Allah who will come in this particular shape. You know, they think it's Allah here is Satan. Allah is Satan because they don't recognize his shape. Right? So they say, we seek we, we seek refuge with Allah from you. So they think it's Satan. This is our place. We will not follow you. So they will not follow Allah. Till our Lord comes to us. And when our Lord comes to us, we will recognize him. So as you see, again, Allah entering his creation. And he can be seen by Muslims. Again. Making shish kebab. Spanking Abdus who lie and say that Allah does not enter his creation. Here as you see Allah does enter his creation and will come in a physical shape. 
and Muslims do not recognize him in the first time. Then here Allah shape shifts, Allah changes his shape and will come to them in a shape they know and will say, I am loyal, your Lord. So here Allah is saying, hey, hey, hello, it's me, Allah. They will say, no doubt, you are our Lord and they will follow him. So in the second time, with a different shape that they know, they will recognize him. So here again, Allah changing his shape. So how many shapes does Allah have? How many physical shapes? And why do you Muslims have a problem with Jesus coming into the flesh as God? But you don't have problem with Allah entering his creation, changing shapes all the time, right? To be known to the Muslims so they can see him, right? And we know Allah will lift up his dress and he will show his shin, which is part of your leg, right? I think Allah lo looks really funny, you know, he has two right hands, right? He has eyes and he has a nice sexy shin, beautiful shin of Allah, right? And of course, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, as you see in front of you. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6573. So Muslims can't say this is not a da'if, da'if hadith. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih. Muslims, Muslims or Muslims, either you're going to accept that Allah can enter his creation or reject Allah and the fake prophet who created many disasters in the hadith and in the Quran as we showed you today and accept our Lord and Savior who is the only one who can save us because we cannot save ourselves accept him and become a Christian today. Join us in Christ so you can be saved. Glory to his name, Jesus Christ. As you see guys, Islam is false, Jesus is Lord, and Muhammad is a fake prophet. Guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this teaching today. And I think we did a nice job, don't you think guys? Exposing the fake prophet of Islam, contradicting himself over and over and over. And Muslims, 1400 years later, need to fix all these disasters that Muhammad created. They have to lie so they can invite you to Islam. They use deception, they use lies, to, they lie about the Quran, they lie about their prophet, they lie about their hadith to deceive you so you can convert and say the Shahada, right? So guys, I want to ask you to put some questions in the chat so we can do a nice Q&A session after this teaching. So if you have any question about today's topics that we mentioned, please go ahead and I will try to answer your questions. So I'm looking now at the live chat. So if you have any questions, please ask them. Guys, uh, I forgot to say something uh, before we do this. Um, Many people don't know who Rob Christian is. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, guys, and you go to the About page on my YouTube channel, you will see I put there a small description about myself uh, that I'm doing this for 14 years already. Uh, I started uh, basically my work on the very old school Paul Talk platform where people like Zechariah Botras our dear friend, brother in Christ, Christian Prince, who is always doing an amazing job. He also used to go there. So I started my ministry there. I learned a lot on that platform and I debated many Muslims there, you know. As you know, I started to record and doing videos for the last six months. 
but I'm doing this already for 14 years. Guys, I merely made a big mistake in my life and that was when I didn't start record from the very beginning 14 years ago. So, else I would have had thousands and thousands of videos by now, like uh, our friend Christian Prince, you know. But, you know, it's never late to record videos, right? So, this is why many people still don't know about me. So, guys, keep me in your prayers. Download my videos, translate them, and put them again on your social media, on YouTube, on Facebook, etc. So, this is a small basically background story about me. I also have debated many sheikhs uh, and you can find uh, some debates on my YouTube channel but unfortunately the older debates I did not record when I was on Paul Talk. Well, like I said, it's never too late and thank you again for joining in. God bless you and please go ahead and ask me some questions and I hope I can try to answer most of them. I will also want to uh, thank the admins that always doing a great job. God bless, bless you. Please pray for them. They are also putting their private time into this. Uh, and please keep supporting us. If you can support us through Patreon, please do so. We need your support. We need your prayers. But if you can't donate, it's of course not a problem. Please only donate when you can, whenever you can. But if you can't, it's not a deal at all, you know. Then please keep uh, you, us in your prayers. That's already enough. Guys, please ask me the question. Sorry if, you know, this is my first time, but, you know, I'm still learning how uh, going live works. And as you saw in the beginning, I had some technical difficulties to go live, but we managed, thank to the Lord. Yes, I will do some more live, uh, live shows. You know, I have a very old PC. I'm still shocked that the live show did not die or crash during the all that time so thank to the lord but i really need to replace my old equipment i have a very old five dollar mic and I, it's really about time to replace it and if you can donate i really also want to replace my old computer it's over eight years old imagine and i'm still spanking the fake prophet of Islam and a lot of Muslims in my debates, as you noticed. Um, no, I'm not on Poltok anymore, Xeltra one. I'm not uh, on Poltok uh, like I used to go. Sometimes I do go in, but I see that there is not as much activity as Discord. Maybe the admins can uh, drop the links to the Discord servers that I go to. There are a couple of Discord servers that um, I sometimes visit to go on the voice chat, teach and even debate Muslims. But lately, Muslims are hiding. They don't have the courage and the knowledge, unfortunately, to face me. Uh, and the Ustaz, <laughs> the Ustaz, the, the scholars, from Indonesia or, or other Asian countries are hiding, you know. So if you know a couple of them, invite them to Discord or invite them, give them my Skype ID. My Skype ID is the Europe Christian without separate characters, the Europe Christian. That's my Skype ID. So if you know any Ustaz, let him call me. If you know any Imam who think who has the knowledge and the courage to step up and defend Muhammad, let him come. You know, people who know me, they know I'm always up for the debate. Let's see, uh, let's see if uh, I can answer a question from the text. 
Do Muslims know when exactly was the Bible corrupted? Cat C is asking. Was it before Muhammad or after? Well, Cat C, they don't know. They can't prove it. They, they don't have any clue. They only say the Bible is corrupted. The Bible of Allah is corrupted without shame, without any dignity. As we showed you, the Bible is not corrupted because in the time of Muhammad, Muhammad had access to the to the uh, Torah and the Injil as we showed you. But they have to lie, they have to assume 1400 years later and fix the mistakes that Muhammad created for them, the dilemmas that Muhammad caused for the Muslims because Muhammad was confirming our holy scripture, the scripture of the Jews and the Christians in the Quran and the Hadith. And he was actually judging by the Torah and swearing by the Torah as we showed you from the Hadith, from two different Hadiths, right? And the Quran confirms the Torah and the Injil. Let's see if I can answer a couple more questions. Guys, keep the questions coming. Yeah, uh, Shivali Armand is asking, no human could have been 90 feet. That is by all biologically impossible due to weight and height of this Adam and think how big was his reproductive organ well uh, Armand Allah knows best <laughs> Allah <laughs> you know Adam was a huge giant man Some, somehow humans started to get less taller and taller you know we have, I mean, for God's sake, we have midgets. We have small people. Sorry if I call them midgets. We have small people today. So imagine how much humans have been become smaller. Right? It's, it's strange. Strange things in the teaching of Muhammad. Allahu Alam guys, uh, that's the best answer for Muslims. Let's see if we can answer more questions. Uh, Andy Shannon is asking, has anyone ever asked a Muslim why their fake God saved Jesus? Well, they say uh, basically he's a prophet, you know, and Allah protects his prophets. So Allah saved Jesus from dying, which is the Quran does not say. The Quran says, at wafika, so I caused you to die, you know. Uh, if I want to say in Arabic, uh, my my dad died. I would say uh, Abuya Tawaffa, right? You do you hear, guys? Tawaffa, which means he died. My dad died, but the Quran also says and uses the word Tawaffa. Allah is causing Jesus to die. So actually, Jesus did die, right? And we know in Christianity, according to the New Testament, Jesus did die on the cross. But Muslims have to fix, right? The problems that Muhammad created in the Quran. We know, yeah, guys, maybe you have heard this before. The tafsir of the Quran was created in the first place to defend Islam. So <laughs> they have to assume, even though the most early scholars have to assume that Allah saved Jesus, but the Quran does not say that. It clearly says Allah caused Jesus to die. Tawaffa. Who at Tawaffa? He died. So how did dying become not dying? <laughs> how did how did Jesus uh, go to heaven in Islamic sex brothel called Jannah? How did he go there? Right? Alive? That doesn't make sense because the Quran clearly says Allah caused Jesus to die. 
So Muslims are strange, strange uh, people. You know, they always go against the Quran. They have to fix the dilemmas that Muhammad created in the Quran, the huge disasters that Muhammad created in the Quran. And we know a prophet who needs fixing is a fake prophet. So Muslims 49 years later have to fix the problems that Muhammad created in the Quran and in the Hadith. And yes, Xeltro uh, is saying Isa is not Jesus. Yes, that's correct. We believe guys, we believe after carefully studying the Bible and the Quran, we believe that Muhammad actually made huge historical errors, huge historical disasters. He confused Mary, the mother of Jesus, with Maryam, the sister of Aaron and Moses. We have a 1500 years difference. Not one, not two, but 1500 years difference between Maryam, the sister of Aaron and Moses, and the mother of Jesus, Mary. And not only that, we Arabic speaking Christians, guys, please pay attention. We don't call him Isa, we call him Yeshua al Messiah. So if you ask a Arabic speaking Christian who lives in the Middle East, he doesn't know Isa, guys. He only knows Yeshua al Messiah, glory to his name. And in the Aramaic, he is called Yeshua Amshiho. Yeshua Amshiho. This is why the Arabic speaking Christians are calling him Yeshua, which comes from Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. But Muhammad had no clue who Jesus was. He had no clue who Mary was. And he confused Esau, the brother of Israel, Jacob. His name was Esau. He confused him with Jesus. This is why he called Jesus Isa, which is basically Esau. That, this, that does make sense, right? Because Muhammad had no clue. He actually did have no clue who our holy Lord Jesus Christ is. This is why again Muhammad is a fake prophet. A true prophet of God would have never made such huge mistakes. And this is a huge guys. Muslims wake up. When you're going to be a fake prophet like Muhammad, you're going to copy from here copy from there, copy from Jewish legend stories, copy from Christian stories, copy from the Bible, you're going to make mistakes. And that's what happened with Muhammad. He was making a lot of mistakes. Let's see if we can get more questions so we can answer them. Let me scroll through the chat, guys. Please keep them coming. I really am enjoying myself, guys, today with you. God bless you. <laughs> I'm having a really nice time with you. I'll answer one question and then we will end this live show. Last question, guys. Let's see. Okay, Marcus Tembeck, Marcus Tembeck is asking me, Rob Christian, what was the moment you realized that you had to counter the lies of Islam? Was there an event or a piece of information you learned? Well, Marcus Tembeck, I'm an Arabic speaking Christian from the Middle East, as you re realized, because I was reading the Quran from the Arabic for you, as you uh, saw in the beginning of the show. Uh, the thing is, uh, our Christians, our brothers and sisters in Christ, have suffered a lot in the Middle East. We had to accept a language that was never ours, which is the Arabic, Al-Arabiya. It was never our language. We spoke Aramaic, 
you know, Christians in Egypt, they were Copts. They had their own Coptic language, but the Arabic was forced on us. So we thank God that we actually learned Arabic. Now we can use the Arabic language against Islam. So someone invited me to Paul Talk 14 years ago, and I really enjoyed what was happening. And I thought, hey, let's put the Arabic language into use because I saw many people needed people like me who could speak and read Arabic to bust Islam. You, you need to know that 14 years uh, ago, many websites were not there, not many uh, sources you can find uh, in Google, peace be upon him. So, you know, we were, we came in handy basically. And I loved what people like uh, Zachariah Botros was doing. And he also was on Paltok and Muslims put actually 60 million on his head because he's still busting the fake prophet of Islam. You know, he's still exposing Islam on his own TV channel. So he stopped going to Paltok and debate Muslims on Paltok because he used to debate Muslims. And I first went to the Arabic section of Paul Talk, but then I moved to the English section where they needed people like me. And I realized, hey, this is my calling. I need to do this. I will risk my life doing this because, you know, Muslims uh, threatened us and they still threaten me. Uh, they insult us, but we don't lower ourselves, right? We are not ashamed of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not cowards. I love to die for Jesus Christ, right? So this is why I kept doing what I do now after 14 years. So guys, I always need your prayers and support. Please keep supporting us. Please pray for the warriors in Christ. Pray for Christian Prince. Pray for David Wood. Pray for Sam Shimon. Pray for the people who are standing in the front lines to expose the filth and satanic cult of Muhammad that he created 14 years later. Sorry, 1400 years later. So guys, I really need to go. I think uh, this was a first nice uh, live show. Hopefully the second live show will be much easier for me. It will go much smoother. But first time is always hard, right? So thank you for supporting us. Thank you for your donations. Uh, if you have the time please always keep watching our videos download our videos spread them around and if you can if you truly can please consider supporting our work through patreon you can come become a patron on my patreon account on patreon.com slash rob christian thank you for watching guys Thank you for watching and download this video. Download it because we, not, we need to expose Islam more and more. Muslims who are victims of this satanic cult need our videos. Please keep translating my videos to the Indonesian language and other Asian languages because many poor Asian people have become a victim of the satanic cult and they need the truth to be told. Jesus is the one who can save them. We can't convert anyone guys, right? We can't convert anyone, but we can give them 
the truth and only the truth will set everyone free All right thank you for watching guys thank you for your support jesus is lord and 